Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. What always comes to mind? It comes. It yeah. It, it, it comes, and as I read your book, I gather that what you're saying is it comes from the oneness. There you go. It comes from the fact that we we are a uh, fabric of the universe. Or the, all these boundaries that we see in our skin is uh, is a wonderful boundary. Our uh, a it, membrane. It's, yeah. It is a membrane, and of course, all biology is based on such membranes, and, yeah. and the ego is conditioned to protect whatever is inside the membrane from what's outside, but right. uh, from a more metaphysical perspective, it's all one. Yes, and, and then, that's where it started in the LSD. I yeah. experienced oneness. Yeah. And I didn't ha really have to explain that part of it. What I was trying to do was explain, well, why, why was there fear involved? Mm -hmm. Why was there suffering involved in having experienced that tremendous revelation of what reality is, yeah. that we're all connected? Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the whole thing about uh, what would oneness look like? Why, why is there oneness? And if you take away all our eyes, all our, not, not, I don't want, to, don't want to use the word egos, mm -hmm. there's one of us. Yeah. And that kind of language is kind of popular, not popular, but it's the hidden message behind psychedelic from the beginning for the past mm -hmm. 50 years. Yeah. And uh, Alan Watts says something like, his famous phrase about his experimentation with, with psychedelics was, when you get the message, hang up. And what he meant by that was, the LSD is the microscope, but the scientist or the investigator doesn't just keep his eye glued to the microscope. He leaves it, goes off and works with what he has seen. Mm -hmm. And that, that's really the completion of, of the experience. It, it reminds me of uh, a study done by you know, the late Houston Smith, mm -hmm. who was a friend of mine. And yeah. uh, he compared psychedelic uh, experience with the classical descriptions of mystical experience. Uh, he, he used something called a Q-sort, as I recall, which is a psychological method of matching and comparing. And what he found was his, his expert judges couldn't distinguish. There's no difference at all between the reports of mystics of their experience of unity and the reports of psychedelic drug users. But the, the difference he did find in the lives of the great mystics is they took that experience. They built monasteries. They built communities. They engaged in uh, charitable activities. They were active in the world doing things. Whereas you can use, have a psychedelic drug experience, and, and I've had many, and many thousands of people out right. there have had many. They don't necessarily, uh, in each and every case, change their lives. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And there's no praise or blame there. You know, we, we all have our set of mm -hmm. what's going to turn us on, you yeah. know. And even with Houston Smith, he was one of the people in the experiments that, El that Leary did yes. at the chapel, and the Good Friday exper experiment. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Well, James Guy, this has been a delightful conversation. I, I really commend you on the uh, Thank you. focus of your work and on, on the brilliant artwork and uh, video that you've created. Thank you so much for being with me. Thank you. And thank you for being with us.